Well, welcome to the week in advance. I'm with Chris Onefeather. How you doing, Chris? Fantastic. How are you, David? Oh, it feels like springtime. I'm I'm starting to feel the taste of spring. I feel like the universe is dangling the carrot in front of us, leading us into the spring. Yes, well, in California, you get the innuendo of it, and here in Wisconsin, it's like uh, yee-haw, yee-haw, doggy, because, uh, you know, things are surging. The Fox River is flooding its banks, and... Uh, I got an advertisement in the mail from the tractor supply company, and there's not uh, there's not a man on the planet who doesn't respond to uh, you know big rigs, tractors, and all that kind of stuff. So spring is when we uh, go out and start thinking about plowing the fields and uh, yes. initiating that uh, that surge of uh, newborn life. I think uh, plowing the fields is the best, the best way to describe, you know, that Taurus energy. That's the peak of spring, you know, the fixed sign of spring. You always look at the fixed signs, and that's the peak of the season. And, you Absolutely. know, springtime is about pulling that bull out. But we are coming, getting ready for Aries, even though we are still in Pisces for this week. But, you know, I think the whole message starting off to have Mars go into Aries, you know, earlier this week, and as we're starting this new week, it's like, we're being led into the spring, literally. Like we're all being forced now to courageously start thinking about new starts, start thinking about new, you know, confidence in where we're going to go, like the direction of our life, the new beginnings. And um, it's an exciting period because we're finishing up so much spiritual work, but we do have stronger masculine energy to get through us now. We do have the, the fresh start energy. Oh, absolutely. And one of the things that's interesting about uh, this season of the year, if you're in uh, rural areas where people are, in fact, farming and uh, doing activities outdoors, a lot of people will go out and they will set their fields afire right now with all this old growth from last year. So <clears throat> it's not uncommon to see farm fields in the region with fire as a uh, purification and you know preparing for the new cycle and as the sun moves into fiery Aries we've got Mars and Aries and all of this uh, the holy fire I guess you could say is going to be consuming us over the next month or or six weeks as uh, we do prepare to uh, be purified and then to be reborn, I guess you could say. I agree. I'm I'm especially getting excited because, you know, and let's like start already here with Friday, you know, Venus and the sun are getting close um, to their conjunction. And then guess what? Venus is getting closer to Mars as well for their once every two year conjunction that'll happen in Aries. So there's a lot of positive energy that's really starting to ramp up. You know, that Venus energy, when it comes closer to the sun, there is so much power there. There is so much beauty. There is so much understanding. And I am so happy that Venus and the Sun are going to connect in Pisces. Oh, absolutely. The interesting thing for people who are listening to us and don't have a clear sense of, of how these positions are occurring, Venus is an inner planet. So it is between us and the Sun. And Mars is an outer planet. So we are between Mars and the Sun. So in reality, you've got this one, two, three, four equation. You've got the sun, you've got Venus, you've got the earth, and you've got Mars. And as this alignment occurs, you know, we're seeing this union of all these forces. So yeah, we're having a real spring this year, probably much more of a surge in that direction than we have had for the last few years. Yeah, this has been a deep winter. I mean, that Capricorn energy, the start of the winter was we had another, you know, six planet pileup pretty much or five planet pileup. There was six at one point, but, you know, huge pileup there. And that started a very heavy winter for us all really having to gather a new foundation in our life, you know. And then we went into Aquarius, you know, it was a pretty deep, you know, part of the winter as well, you know, forcing us to really start to look at our future, try new things. And then here we are, you know, finishing up the Pisces realm, finishing up this winter. And it's been the deepest winter. You know, this is this is the, the quiet right before the fire, Pisces. But this is where 
you prepare. You prepare, you let go of your final year because we do have a new year starting up with Aries. Really, it is the new year if we look at a lot of the way that older religions have looked at New Year's. Oh, yeah. yeah it's the new lunar year for uh, a lot of the tribal people. And um, the other thing that's been interesting was, as you had mentioned on the last show, we've had Saturn sitting there at 11 degrees Scorpio, not doing a damn thing. And finally, Saturn is starting to, to you know, slowly move forward now. But it's exactly what you were talking about. It created a very deep sense of winter, and it created a sense of immobilization. So a lot of people had the enthusiasm, they had the, the desire to do things, but they didn't know where to go with this. And then, so they were just kind of like in a, in a stationary position waiting for the universe to say, hey, do this or do that, go here, go there. Yeah, and it was much more internal. It was much more, I mean, it was all trining Pisces, all this Pisces energy, which is just go deep inside. All the work is actually on the inside, figuring out your spiritual connection, figuring out what are the obstacles, what is getting in between you and your highest vibration. So really, there was a lot of work, but you're right. I always look at Saturn as the old man, right, in the, in mm -hmm. the Zodiac. And, you know, it's like an old man with a cane who, who has not moved for a month and a half, but he's started to make his steps, you know. So now we're starting to see the movement. You know, it's like waiting for a person to get going, you know, and, and he's moving now. So there's going to be a lot more forward movement. Everybody can start to move forward. And with this powerful spring Aries energy we're going to get, this is going to feel like uh, an amusement park, kind of like, wow, you know, that excitement of and the feeling and the sun's going to burn really bright. I've got a feeling coming up here this spring. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be uh, much more apparent. Uh, you're going to notice it more and you're going to feel it more, especially as you're getting closer to tropical regions. You're going to be feeling uh, that tingling sensation of the mm -hmm. sun on our skin. Well, our card for Friday, interestingly enough, deals with the moon. It's the high priestess. Ooh. And as Friday begins to unfold here, we have um, a moon-Saturn opposition. Yeah. So um, that's a time to stop and uh, become aware of your environment. Take note of your surroundings because uh, Saturn is going to present lessons to you. It's going to offer you some insights, but you have to be receptive to that. And uh, we've also got the moon in trying to Pluto, and it's sextiling Mercury, Chiron, and Pisces. So we've got a lot of activity that the moon is setting off that will be with us throughout the entire weekend. Yeah, and this moon is also highlighting the nodes, the south node in Taurus, which there is a lot of purging emotionally of old values, you know, old things that you've really, you know, held on to you know that one thing about that taurus energy is it's it's our value systems it's you know and in order for us to really step into this saturn scorpio this north known scorpio you know we do emotionally have to let go of i'm calling it you know baggage you know a value baggage like we need to just step into our true emotional deep you know some of it is primitive desires like sex and you know death and killing like this is the thing where it's like in your life, when you reach Friday, let go of the old fluff in your life and really just invest because I look at Scorpio as invest, invest in what you truly desire and find the emotional value in your desires, but not in more of the physical energy that you've always accustomed your feeling good to. You know, we have to find new ways to feel good. That's what's um, very interesting about this, uh, you know, really weird opposition with Saturn and the moon and the moon and Taurus with the south node here. The moon, the moon and the south node are really teaching you that it's new emotions, but they have to become from letting go of old emotions. Oh, absolutely. And uh, old fears. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when the moon's in, uh, in Taurus, it brings out our primal fear uh, issues. Because uh, Aries, as it passes through Aries, we identify the moon with our ego. We try to tap into our ego's needs and identity issues, things like that. When it hits Taurus, though, it wants to 
um, substantiate itself. It wants to anchor itself in the earth. And it's not, uh, not uncommon under that kind of pressure to see um, people act violently in order to establish or protect what they perceive as being their place in the world. And uh, interesting that all this stuff is paralleling what's going on in the Vatican. So we're seeing a lot of that old baggage uh, with 600 years of uh, this Catholic imprint of uh, celibacy in the various offices in the church. And uh, a lot of this stuff is going to start to really implode right now. Yeah, especially because what it, what's happening this weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Mercury is finishing up the retrograde. So um, I think it's interesting as we're recording this, it's only been black smoke at the Catholic Church. They still haven't picked somebody, if I'm correct. Um, right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe we're not going to see a pick till Mercury goes direct, this coming up Monday here. But this is the weekend to parallel into our own lives. Like, this is the last, I'm calling this the spiritual trickle down. You know, this is a very important moment this weekend because we've got Mercury and we've got Neptune, which are very close in a conjunction. And this is us really having to, in a still moment, find that spiritual trickle down, beautiful energy of what spirit's wanting to communicate in our life. And um, with this moon in Taurus and then going into Gemini, I think it's interesting that the moon is going to square Mercury retrograde on Sunday, the, the right before it goes direct. Exactly. And, and that may be the roughest part of uh, the next 10 day cycle, because that's going to bring up a lot of issues that people are trying to avoid and it's going to explode them. I mean, whenever you have any kind of uh, Jupiter influence going on, it magnifies things. It, it makes things grow out of proportion. So, um, a lot of this activity that's going to be on is going to balloon and we're going to have to stop and address it. We are. We're going to have to learn to listen to our mind and our emotions and not have them work against each other. But this is a spiritual mind. This is an understanding the signs. You're not going to have all the clues that you typically will have. These are very deep magical clues. They're going to be in your dreams. They're going to be, I always say, written on the toilet at a gas station. I mean, you know, these clues are really going to be weird and you can't emotionally run away from these things. You're going to have to face them. You're going to have to find the value in this spiritual message that will be given to you by Sunday. I really mm -hmm. believe that the universe is dropping a big <clears throat> spiritual nugget. It might not be easy to take emotionally, but if, if you let go of the old values, you know, and you really step into this new attitude because it is it is pretty much in a square with Jupiter, which shows that if we can emotionally open up to a new attitude, to a new mind, and especially one that spirit is showing us the clues and letting the flow happen, letting spirit come into our lives without our mind pulling us away and thinking we know it all. If we can get these two areas together, you will leave Sunday and this weekend a radically new person and ready for a new start because when Mercury goes direct on Monday, things are just, Bam. Right. You know, and the other thing that's interesting is we've got uh, an additional parallel dance going on because Mars is moving up, up next to Uranus. Yes. And so you've got two very volatile energies. Um, and the, a good way to envision Mars and Uranus conjuncting is imagine a 95-degree day outside and you take a bunch of gas and pour it on a bunch of wood. Now. If you're smart, you will step back 10 feet before you throw the match in that direction because the air is going to be filled with this combustible gas. And that's really what uh, the Aries placement of Uranus and Mars is going to be about. It's going to be very volatile. It's going to be combustible. And it's going to be in sextile to Jupiter. Yeehaw. Yeah, there is a really strong... Uh... <laughs> You know, that's a great way to describe it. I've always thought of it as like cracking open a nuclear bomb and like putting your hands in it and just frying off your hand. I mean, it is gnarly energy. It is really intense. It's very powerful, especially in Aries. I mean, 
just to bring people back here about Uranus and Aries, the day Uranus went into Aries was the Japan earthquake with the huge tsunami and all that fun, crazy stuff, right? So you're having Mars add to this crazy, wild equation. And on top of it, they're making squares to Pluto, which is this really intense energy to add to it, to add Pluto. So this week, the buildup, you have Mercury, which goes finally direct. So our, so our whole, you know, communication, our life, the stimulation, our closer environment really starts to progress forward again. That's one thing about Mercury retrograde is you have to see that your close environment kind of goes on a standstill and you're trying to figure out, you know, did I put the clothes away? Did I put, did I put the, the, the toilet paper roll on? Like little things in your life are kind of off. But now that things are back on and now there's intense energy pushing, this week you are going to feel the electricity. Yeah. And people around you are probably going to be somewhat volcanic uh, on that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Late Sunday afternoon through Tuesday, you will probably notice that uh, people are erupting around you. And this is long-held frustration, animosity, anger. They need to release it. So give people latitude to go off and don't take it personally because they're, they're just um, like St. Helens, you know, they're, they're ready to blow their top. And uh, once they do, that actually is the healing moment when you and their energy can kind of recombine and you can start a new precedent, you can start a new journey with this person that, that is, has a meaningful presence in your life. So be willing to forgive. Uh, yes, especially the 19th and 20th, Tuesday, Wednesday, are really powerful days because on Tuesday, the moon's in Cancer. It's going to square this Mars-Uranus conjunction, oppose Pluto, and on top of it, the sun is on its last day of Pisces going into Aries. So mm -hmm. um, because then Wednesday... Wednesday is going to be a powerful day. And, and you know, it's interesting because Venus and the sun just almost meet up at Pisces and then they go into Aries to meet up. But this whole time while we're talking, Venus and the sun are working together. They are within three degrees the whole time. There is this energy of finding beauty in our life, finding our values, our deep spiritual ones, and really starting to understand how to feel good. One thing I think that the sun and Venus teach us is we need to find out how we can feel good, how we can feel our feminine energy. And you know, a lot of this is teaching us through extreme masculine energy and being understanding of our feminine side, this ability to really hone in on our human nature at the strongest ability to understand how to lead, to understand how to tap into our sensitivities, our feminine energy. This is a beautiful week, really, for, for spirituality and for even just out in the outer world. Your outer world is going to be hopping. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm going to be following you very closely. Actually, I've already made arrangements with Google. We're going to monitor uh, Palmer on this transition because this is going to be a very, very clear trine to your natal sun. So uh, I'll be wanting paparazzi to be following you around to see what goes on on Wednesday. Yeah, well, I'll be on the road on my way to Oregon Wednesday. Um... So it'll be interesting. I'm going to be out on the open road. But, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the Aries energy because here we are. So Wednesday, sun moves into Aries. And this is a very powerful, I would say there's two times in the whole year that are the most powerful. And they really are zero degree Le or Libra and zero degree Aries because these are the equinox periods. They're cardinal points. Cardinal points are, are the most strongest energy in astrology because these are where the seasons change over. So we are switching into the spring. We are switching into the start of the chart, the start of astrology. How all astrology is based is basically off this zero degree Aries point. March 20th is the day. This is also coming into the weekend of Passover, which actually Passover is from the sun passing over literally into Aries. So um, the ram is now coming out. This is time for us to find our courage. And I think it's interesting because we are still having a caboose of Neptune, Mercury, Venus, all there in Pisces. Like, it's going to take courage to pull yourself out of the mud because there'll still be some slippage, I feel. It's like a, there's like, it's like a wet, you know, truck in the mud. Like, you know, as we're going to have all the horsepower to pull us out. 
But remember, there's a lot of sensitivities happening inside still, still connected with Saturn and Scorpio, still connecting with this Pluto energy and the yod that's happening with Jupiter. There is all this crazy energy still going. So use your courage, but don't blow the motor either. Right, right. And uh, again, you mentioned the yod. This is not a finger of God to the sun, but it nonetheless is a very powerful yod because it is combining the outer planets. We've got Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn forming a yod. And you really need to look at where those planets are placed in your personal chart because that's where the epiphany, the aha moment is going to occur. So look at Jupiter in Gemini and then look at your personal chart and look at where uh, Gemini is positioned in your personal chart. And that will give you the clue as to how this yod can reveal something to you that can be very meaningful and very powerful. Yeah, and it really is unveiling that it's in the mind, I feel, this big understanding finally, that in order for us to find our true desires, for us in order to change the structure of our life, of how we want it to be, to really, you know, come into the change we need and to come into you know, Saturn and Scorpio is teaching you that you need to live in your desires, that you need to live in your animalistic, very deep emotional needs. Like, you really need to find out what those are. And the thing that the Yod shows you is it will work or it won't. It's a very weird angle. So it could either be horrible and hard to tow this energy or it can be very easy. And it's as simple as I think it's all pointing towards the mind where we are breaking free of our old patterns of the mind, really stepping into the new computer, letting go of old software programs in our head, you know, really upgrading, and starting to let, you know, all this explosive energy in the new us, let the mind not get in between that, because this yacht all points up to this, you know, Aries energy with Jupiter, you know, Jupiter with Mars and Uranus, and now the sun, everything's going to start really sextiling this Jupiter here, so it really shows like, you can become the new you and go where you need to go as long as your mind doesn't get in between all this stuff. Your mind is, is everything, I'd say. Oh, absolutely. And also, in, uh, in all of these different transitional aspects, you really have to be alert to the durative cycle that's going on. And this is not a yod that is going to be momentary, like if the sun or the moon or Mercury were involved in it. It is a yod that takes these heavy planets. It's much slower. It's much deeper. And uh, to really get the, the sense of a yod, you have two inconjuncts. Now, when you have an inconjunct, that means there's a lack of communication between those regions of your consciousness. So we've got Jupiter in conjunct Saturn and in conjunct Pluto. But that sextile between Saturn and Pluto actually creates a link. It's like, uh, it's like replacing a fuse in an electric box, and you actually get this surge of information and understanding. So over the next week, people will definitely get that huge epiphany, that huge aha experience. And, you know, and you may not even really recognize it when it's happening. It may be 10 days later when you go, holy crap, look at what just happened. And that really leads us into Friday, which, and I'm going to be real here on camera. And I've been doing a lot of readings for people. I do contract negotiations for people and um, launch things. Friday is one of the most powerful days of the year. And I'm going to put it on record here. I've Friday is one of the most powerful days of the year. Um, and, you know, that will lead us into our next show. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, and... Uh, I don't want to give it away now, but, uh, you know, Friday is one of the most powerful days of the year. So... It, yeah, it's going to have... Uh, it's going to have a do-or-die energy to it. So, you know, it's going to bring you up to the brink where you have to make a, a commitment. Am I going to the left or to the right yeah and do you have well i've been telling people do you have the cojones or the ovaries you know mm -hmm. it's really gonna it's really gonna take that and uh 
I think, you know, Thursday leads us up just perfect as we finish that moon in Cancer. You know, we're wrapping up the week very emotional and then we come into Friday and we'll just let you guys know the moon comes into Leo and trines all four planets that will now be in Aries as Venus goes into Aries on Friday. So this is like uh, one of the most powerful days of the year. That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, yeah, we're we're in very hormonal times for those of you who are not in touch with your masculine or feminine energies. There may be a surge here, and you may be feeling a need to go out and uh, lust in the dust or something equally exciting. Yeah, so uh, what's the card for the week? Well, our final card here that we're going through is balance. In the midst of all this, interestingly enough, there are opportunities for you to gain. You know, this can be financial gain, it can be emotional gain, it can be uh, gaining new friends, new um, opportunities, career shifts. This week, because we have had this stagnation with Mercury for three weeks, all of the buildup of that energy is now ready to advance suddenly. There's going to be the surge. It's like well, in my area, it's like the Fox River, you know, all of the snow melts off and the river goes over its banks. And so you're going to see a similar energy this coming week with, uh, with the things that you've been wanting to achieve. And by the end of the week, family is going to become your most important uh, focus. Hmm. Because uh, that sense of what am I leaving to the future, uh, the children, the children's children, what is my legacy? You're going to be considering all those things, and that's looking back up to the activity of Pluto and Capricorn, which is very much legacy-oriented, and uh, looking at Saturn, the great teacher in Scorpio, and then once again, all of this activity going on in Pisces. So it's going to be fun. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Like, one thing about all this energy is I'm calling it pulling us out of the mud, you know, pulling us out of the deepness. Like the universe has to do it because we went so deep into soul. You know, mm -hmm. we've gone so deep into soul that electricity and fire and courage and everything yank us out because they're so deep. It's so deep. It's got to yank it out. It's not a typical just like, okay, let's push you out. It's like, no. Universe has every amount of energy it can possibly bring to us, pretty much, to pull us out into the new world. Like, and this is a new world. Remember, um, you know, this is the new year for a lot of the pagan, you know, traditions, right? Tribal traditions, absolutely. And so, 2012 started this time last year. Really, in my view, I don't pay attention to these stupid calendars. I really don't. Okay, like. Let's throw that away. I do that for reality work. But in spirituality, this is the new year, this week. And this means we're really stepping into 2013. We're really leaving behind 2012, which has been, I guarantee you in your life, one of the weirdest years of your whole life. This is what we were waiting for, is this spring moment to really launch us into the new world, the new earth. I feel like this is the 2012 beginning of the clearing that was so deep with this Pisces energy. I mean, so deep. And really, since October with the Saturn Scorpio, I mean, this all is just really going to throw us in a whole new ball game. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, and, and for people who are sitting and, and watching the video uh, and are they're, they're thinking, oh, I don't feel all this stuff yet. I don't sense all this stuff yet. All of the transitions that have been happening under the sign of Pisces goes all the way back to the core of your soul. And you're healing and transforming and uh, reconnecting with things that go back 10,000 lifetimes, to go back to literally the birth of the, of the universe. So it's not going to be like <clears throat> popcorn and bubblegum. It's not going to be stuff that just pops up in your mind. You say, oh, yeah, I remember blah, blah, blah. But these deep, profound processes are pushing you to a new level of growth. You're like the seed coming to the surface in search of the light. And that really is how you have to look at this stuff because it's not, uh, it's not that type of momentary ephemeral stuff 
that everybody needs in our society as far as the mass consumer mentality. Uh, it's not an ego hit. It's not grabbing a burger on the fly. It is a much, much deeper process going on. That was so beautifully put. That's exactly what this deepness is. It is so deep, root, core, but high vibration. One thing is it's very high vibration. That's what's so funny about Pisces. Even though it's the deepest waters, it's the highest vibration, which you know almost doesn't make sense. That's why it's such a confusing sign. But we're tapping into our highest vibration, our high notes, you know, like the very, you know, so this is like intense energy. And then we really move into, you know, a much more physical place. So things are about to really shift. And, um, you know, it's uncomfortable if you're not very comfortable with your inside. And, and I've been saying in my horoscopes that this energy was in order for you to create your outer reality based on who you really are deep in your soul on the inside. Because in order for this new earth to work, in order for this new universe to work, in order for this new change of the era that we have gone into, this new age, especially the age of Aquarius, we must live from our true core on the inside. So the universe made sure we went to the bottom that Chris just described to, in order to make sure that we come out in this new revolution. Because it really is a revolution, right? Mars and Uranus here. Mm -hmm. This is a new revolution, a new year for you to be who you really are, to stop just walking around on this planet like a dead fish or, you know, a dead, you know, person that's a zombie just like going and doing what you've always done. You have to see who you are on the inside. And I feel people like Chris and I are helping lead this way. We're living in our truth. We're living in our soul. We're being who we really are. And you can feel that. You can feel when people aren't living in their truth. And this is the time where it's zombies out there. And we got to wake everybody up. Right, either that or uh, give allowance for them to implode and do whatever it is that they need to do to uh, to struggle into their rebirthing process. So, you know, rescuing yeah, yeah rescuing people right now uh, is going to be a real dicey situation. You're best to put your attention on refining yourself and reaching out lovingly to everyone around you, but don't rescue. This is not the time for. Uh, being yeah. a martyr. Yeah, you can't you can't do it for other people. The lesson is they have to do it themselves. That's what this Aries energy is, and you'll see it. You'll see it in people who are uncomfortable in their skin, the way that they move their eyes, the way that they move their 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 hands. You can mm -hmm. see how uncomfortable they are in their soul. They don't know who they are. And don't go rest because you you brought up you know what? The best way to end this, Chris, is what you just said. Because Aries tends to want to rescue everybody. You know, mm -hmm. and you have to rescue yourself. You right. know, if they're not willing to go with your program and your life and you're not doing it, you can't go run after them and save them. Believe me, I'm having that in my own situations. I'm doing all these amazing new projects. I'm, I'm giving people the opportunity and they're like, okay, whatever. I'm like, okay, great. I'm going to leave without you. That's right. really what I'm going to do. Because mm -hmm. if you're not going to be serious about it, then I'm done. Right. The train's at the station and it's ready to pull out. So... I know. Jump, Sorry, I've got lots of passion today. I got Mars trying to my son right now. I'm sure you feel it like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. And it's going to be a fabulous week. But, uh, you know, the, the real point is we're giving you the roadmap. You're the one ha who has to make all the different aspects of the journey meaningful for yourself. Yes. What a way to end it. And then getting ready for Friday, which in my book, as an astrologer, is the most one of the most powerful days of the year coming up. So oh, 27. absolutely. So, it's going to uh, be fun. Well, it was good chatting with you, David. I know. I'm so excited. And uh, I can't wait for you know our next show because these shows are just going to keep getting better and better and better. And as the energy just keeps getting increasingly changing. And I mean, it's just so it's just so amazing to watch and, and be living in this time period. It's it's. You know, part of my French, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. We are blessed. We may not realize how blessed we are, but we are blessed by being witness to these amazing uh, shifts and changes that is going to redefine the human experience. Yes. Well, thank you, Chris. I guess we'll leave it on that for people to ponder. And uh, yes. I'll talk to you soon. You have a great weekend. You too, buddy.